As Hitler rose to power in Germany, he had a number of close friends and allies who helped him to solidify his power and prominence over the German state. One of his closest friends and earliest allies was Ernst Röhm, a very interesting figure within the rise of the Nazis, but a figure who Hitler would cross and betray in the most brutal way possible. Röhm was the commander of the SA, the man who got too powerful in Hitler's eyes, and his former friend feared his influence and began to see him as a rival, and for Hitler this meant he had to order his execution. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Ernst Röhm, the leader of the SA, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ernst Röhm was born in Munich, the city in which Adolf Hitler would first try to seize power within. He served in the First World War, and worked his way through a number of different promotions, before after he contracted Spanish flu and almost died. After World War I came to an end, he continued his career in the military in the Reichswehr, and in 1919 he joined the German Workers' Party, which later then became the Nazi Party. Shortly after joining, he became acquainted with Adolf Hitler, and they became very good friends. Rome was seen as a link between the military and right-wing groups, and Rome helped to raise support from these avenues for the party. During the Munich Putsch, he led the Reichkrieg Flagger Militia, and he played an important role. Rome was to announce a revolution to his troops, who would then take up arms and seize the centre of the city. Rome received the call that the revolution was underway, and that Hitler declared this, and he led 2,000 men to the war ministry, where they held out until the next day. As we know, the putsch did not go well for Adolf Hitler, with a shootout near to the Feldhorn Halle, in which 14 Nazis were killed. Following this failed seizure of control, Rome was tried for treason and sentenced to 30 months in prison, but this was suspended and he was placed on probation. Rome continued to be involved in politics, becoming a Reichstag deputy, but whilst Hitler was in prison, he helped to create the Front Barn, which was a spin-off of the Band SA. Hitler wasn't the most supportive of this plan, and was worried that they would cause a threat to his legitimacy. However, in autumn 1930, Hitler called Rome, requesting that he left his position as an advisor in the Bolivian army that he was serving within, and he returned to Germany. Hitler took control of the SA, and asked Rome to serve as the chief of staff for the group. Whilst leading the SA, he brought new ideas to the group, and rearranged the leadership. He also rearranged how the paramilitary group was divided up, and at the time he presided over around 1 million members. The primary role of the SA was to protect prominent Nazi leaders at rallies and meetings, however this was then taken over by the SS later on. It continued to battle against communists and the political rivals of the Nazis, as well as instigate violence against minority groups such as Jews. Rome had the SA organised very well, and he maintained his close relationship with Hitler. Rome himself was homosexual, and this at the time hindered the image of the SA, as well as their reputation for heavy drinking and street fighting. Newspapers even tried to attack Rome for his sexuality, but Hitler stuck by him. Rome was the only Nazi leader who referred to Hitler by his first name, or by his nickname Adi, rather than addressing by the title Mein Führer. The SA was seen as a basis of the National Socialist Revolution, and as a group who would help to reinforce Hitler's aims. But as Hitler realised he needed to seize control using legitimate means, the need to have a paramilitary violent wing of the party became more of a hindrance to Hitler. The members expected huge changes once he was in power, and their numbers grew to around 3 million. These men themselves were incredibly devoted to Rome and his leadership, and he called for a union between the SA and the military, which the army was horrified with. The army saw the SA as a mob, with no tradition or history, and Hitler sought to also limit the size of the SA. He wished to cut the power of the SA for a while, and within the leadership of the Nazi party, an internal power struggle began. A number of officials inside Hitler's inner circle began to turn against Rome, and Goering gave over the Gestapo to Himmler in an attempt to get them to go against Rome. Hitler's decision to turn against Rome was forced by Hindenburg, who issued him with an ultimatum. Unless Hitler took steps to defuse tension in Germany, Hindenburg would declare martial law and turn over the country to the army. This then put Hitler under immense pressure, and with this he tried to destroy Rome and smash the SA to pieces, and for this a purge was planned. 
The Night of the Long Knives was this purge, and documentation was manufactured that suggested that Rome was a traitor, allegedly being paid 12 million Reichsmarks by the French to overthrow Hitler. This was made up by Himmler and Heydrich, and the leaders of the SS were shown this, and then a list of targets inside the SA was drawn up. Hitler then got the army on board for the purge, and Rome was expelled from the German officers' league. He then ordered the SA leaders to meet with him on the 30th of June at 11am. Before this meeting, a large number of police and SS members, along with Hitler, arrived at a hotel where Rome and his followers were staying. Whilst in bed, Rome, along with many other leaders of the SA, were taken from their beds and arrested, and he was turned over to two armed detectives. That day, a large number of SA leaders were shot. However, Hitler initially decided to pardon Rome due to his services to the Nazi movement. Hitler declared that the SA had been undisciplined and disobedient, and he told crowds of the worst treachery in world history. Goebbels put the final motion for the purge into action, telephoning Goering in Berlin with a code word to order the execution squads to go to Stadelheim prison to prepare for mass executions. It was at Stadelheim where Ernst Rome was being held, but Hitler was hesitant to order his execution. He eventually believed that Rome should have the option of taking his own life, however on the 1st of July 1934 his luck would come to an end. So it was clear for Rome, either he could take his own life or have it taken from him. Whilst being held at Stadelheim prison, he was visited in his cell by Theodor Eicher and Michael Lippert. They made their way into Rome's cell and had a short bit of discourse. During this they made it perfectly clear for Rome of his choices. They said he had 10 minutes to kill himself or they would do it for him. And they left the loaded Browning pistol with him, with only a single cartridge inside the gun. He said in response, if I am going to be killed, then let Adolf do it himself. There was a silence for the next 10 minutes, and then Eicher and Lippert went back to his cell at 1450. They found Ernst Röhm stood defiantly in the middle of the cell, with his bare chest puffed out. At this point they both pulled out their guns, and fired many bullets into his body. It was later claimed Rome fell to the floor, moaning Mein Führer. Goebbels later went on to state in his diary that the executions were nearly finished. It is difficult but cannot be avoided. There must be peace, but Hitler suffers greatly. The killings of the SA in Rome were legalised by the Nazis and excused as a matter of self-defence by the state. Attempts were made to erase Rome from German history and the Nazis rise to power after his execution. The Night of the Long Knives resulted in the deaths of more than 200 people, including the execution of one of Hitler's closest friends, Ernst Röhm. Röhm's execution was one which Hitler deemed necessary, but it was one which was incredibly brutal. He is seen by some as a victim of Hitler's Third Reich, however he was a man who was intent on spreading the hatred and violence associated with the Nazis. He was in no way a good man, but his death is incredibly interesting, and it came at a time that allowed Hitler to consolidate his power. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.